In C Sharp 11, we now have pattern matching on lists, and it's pretty awesome. Let's see an action in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. And here I have already set some things up for us so we can get hit the ground running here. I've got a console application in .NET 7. This is important because .NET 7 and C Sharp 11 go together. You can't really separate the two very easily. Um, they rely on each other. So what we've got here is a, a, a simple application. It's a console application. We have a string called CSV. If you don't know, CSV stands for comma separated value. And the value that I'm putting in here, I've got some, we'll comment these others out. Um, I've got some different values I'm putting in. Notice they're all separated by commas. And then I split them out into a string array. Now this could also be a list of string, but I'm just splitting it into a string array. Either one will work for the purposes of this video. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an array, it can be a, a list of string. So this right here, you know, do we encode? You probably don't do it that often like this, but you very often get a text file that is a CSV that has a whole bunch of lines of text that are comma separated and you would do something similar to this. So this is just going to be a stand in for creating what would really be a real world scenario of a, a split string or a string in an array. We could also use this with numbers, with any type of array we want. But what we're going to do is we're going to first print out the CSV to the console. Just so you know, hey, this is what we're working with. That way, since we, we're going to change this over and over, as you see, um, you'll know which string we're operating on. And then we're going to put a blank line in there. And then we're going to do some work here in this if. But if it fails, for whatever reason, it's going to say bad input. All right. So this is the setup for our, our whole um, system. And what I want to do first is I want to figure out if this or what the value is for just this first entry. Now I could say, Hey, give me the info at position zero, but what if I need to know that there's exactly three entries in this list? Otherwise it's bad data. Okay. So that's a pretty common scenario. Maybe you have three columns, but if you only get back two columns, there's bad data in that line somewhere. You can't trust either columns data. And so we could say, well, if length equals three and then give me the first value and kind of make it complex, or we can say info, which that's our split strands, our array is, and then we can do a pattern match on this. Now, the first we're going to do is we're going to get the ID. So var ID. Now I could say string ID. I'm just using var because it's, it's, it's quicker. Okay. And then I don't care about the next two things, I, but I want to know that there's three total elements in this array. So we use a discard character. The discard character is the underscore. And what it does is says there's something here, but I don't care what it is. I'm not going to store it anywhere. I just need to know there's something here and we're going to use it one more time. So now what this says is there should be three values in my array. I'm going to put the first value into a variable called ID and we're going to verify that it has two more values in that array. We don't care what those two are. This is a pattern that we're matching. All right. And now I can say console right line. Uh, let's do a string interpolation here. ID and we'll put the ID here like so. So if the string has three elements and then we're going to capture the first element in a variable called ID, which we can use right here. Otherwise we're going to say bad input. If we were to run this, let's wait for it. And it says ID is one. So it's captured that value. Now that one is a string, just so we're clear here. It's not converting to an integer or something else. We'd have to do that as a separate cast, but it has figured out that yes, it's one. Now, what if I uncommented this, which of course 
this is going to overwrite the CSV value with one comma Tim. So with one comma Tim, that does not match the pattern of three elements. So if I were to run this, we get bad input. So that's the input and it says, no, 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 that's a bad input. So this pattern matching is working. So let's expand this a bit. We're gonna comment this back out. And instead of not capturing these, let's say var first name and var last name. Again, these are both strings. Let's uh, copy this two more times and say first name is, and then last name is, and we'll put the values in here. Last name and first name. So now we're doing a pattern match on three elements and we're capturing all three elements. And if we run this, we get ID first and last name. So we've made some progress with this pattern match, but there's some really cool stuff we can do with it as well. We already know that this will fail, but what about this? This has five elements. Will that pass? Well, no, it won't. It's gonna say that we have bad input, but we can say the underscore twice more, right? But that's if we care how many inputs are after the first three elements. Maybe we don't care, in which case we can use the dot dot. And what this indicates is zero or more matches. So if I were to run this, first name, last name, and ID, it all gets, and this is a valid input. I can come back up here and have just these three and run this, and I still get valid input because it's a zero or more selector. So that allows us to capture that. But what if we had something even longer? Maybe this, okay? Well, first of all, it's gonna match. It's gonna be just fine as it is, but what if you want to capture that last word? Well, we can say comma var, let's call this ending. And we'll put it in here so you can capture it. Ending is ending. So we got this zero or more characters. If we run this, it captures world. Doesn't matter how many are in the middle, it captures the last one. We can even come back up here to this one, which only has four. I'm sorry, five, let's make it four. There we go, four. And it still captures world, even though it's only four because it's zero or more. So we're good there. Now, what if we came down here? Well, first of all, let's uncomment this one and Right now, we've got this long one here that works, but what if you want to say, instead of capturing the ID, we want to validate that it is ID number one. Well, instead of saying var ID, we can just say one. Don't forget, it's a string. And we can comment out this console. All right, so now if we run this, it's still valid input, and it's validated that yes, this is one. Let's prove that by uncommenting this one, which is Sue Storm instead. And it says that's bad input because it starts at a number two. But what if you wanted to work with number one or number two? Well, not a problem. We can say or two. And with this, we now have a valid match. So this allows us to be very, very flexible in looking at our arrays and evaluating them in pulling pieces out. And it allows us to do things that really reduce the amount of checks we have to do and val validation and verification into really nice, easy to see pattern matches. So this is pattern matching that's now on lists and arrays in .NET 7 and C Sharp 11. Thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.